In module 3.2, we're going to look at proteins. Dietary protein has lots of functions in our body, and I want you to understand how our bodies use these amino acid building blocks that we get from the protein we eat to make our own proteins inside our bodies, or what your book refers to as self-synthesized or endogenous protein synthesis. And this is what our body does to make proteins, to repair tissue, to maintain tissue, to provide structure for cells in our muscles, our brain, our organs, as well as the proteins that are used in synthesis of enzymes, immune function, hormones, and in our blood. This process of dietary denaturation and digestion is what we're going to cover first. And then we'll go into details on protein synthesis, functions, what our body needs, and what happens during protein deficiency and protein excess. I think what we're going to get through today, though, in this screencast will be the denaturation and digestion process and begin to discuss protein synthesis. Protein denaturation is a process that causes the protein itself to change shape. The proteins and amino acids are still intact. This denaturation process can be caused by heat, chemical treatment, or metals. And this denaturation process is essential before proteins can be digested in our bodies. There's no way that the egg that you ate for breakfast once you swallow it, it's going to go directly to the bloodstream. It has to be broken down into its component parts, those component parts being the amino acids, before they can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Let's look at the process of denaturation by heat. Have you ever hard-boiled an egg wrong? By that, I mean, have you ever started hard-boiling an egg and you notice that this white stuff starts coming out of the egg because it cracked? What you're seeing is the process of denaturation of the egg protein albumin. What's happening is because you didn't know how to properly hard boil your eggs, and I speak from experience on this, what happened was the shell of the egg cracked and that clear white stuff known as albumin began to leak out into the surrounding boiling water. This heat process denatured that albumin. And that means it started to separate and break apart those amino acid bonds or peptide bonds, causing the protein to change shape into that white protein that you see circulating around in your pot. What we have here on the right are what correctly hard-boiled eggs look like, although there's some green in some of them, so I don't, I'm not sure that's really good. The thing is that that denatured protein is much easier for our body to digest and absorb. Another way proteins can be denatured is by chemical reaction. And we're going to look at Nicole Kidman's hair as a way of showing you chemical denaturation. What I want you to look at is the shape of her hair. Not necessarily the frizziness, but the fact that it is fairly straight. What she's having is a permanent. And what's going on is that the protein or keratin fibers in her hair, this is a single shaft of hair. We're pulling out one strand of hair. We're looking at these coiled peptide chains. The protein in your hair is known as keratin. And what happens is that the chemicals are being applied to the hair. The keratin in the hair is made up of amino acids that contain sulfur, and the sulfur bonds together in what's called disulfide bridges. What the chemical does is it breaks those disulfide bridges, what you see here. Then you take the hair and you reshape it around, in this case, I guess, curlers, and you get new disulfide bonds. So what's happening is you're changing the structure of the amino acids. And now we see Nicole Kidman with a somewhat happier look on her face and curly hair. So this is another way that protein denaturation works. It happens to food. 
in the cooking process. It happens to proteins in our body, and here's an example of how it happens to your hair. After protein has been denatured, or the protein strand is broken, the amino acids are released. This occurs by enzymes that are secreted in the pancreas and on the cells that line the gastrointestinal tract. These are called protease enzymes. They break down proteins. The protein chain or the amino acid chain is then broken down into individual amino acids that are absorbed across the intestinal cells into the bloodstream and then are transported to the cells and used to build proteins. We have an intact protein here on the left and then during the digestive process that protein is denatured by the acid in our stomach and on the right, we now have individual amino acid or what are called polypeptide chains. These polypeptide chains are then broken down into individual amino acids that then get absorbed into the bloodstream and transported to the cells. We eat protein and then we make protein in our cells. So after the protein has been denatured and digested, after the amino acids have been absorbed and transported to the cells, what happens is that within each cell, a new protein is made or synthesized according to the program in the DNA in the nucleus of the cell. This protein is synthesized in a process of converting DNA into RNA and then into protein. It's the genes that are inside the chromosomes of our cell that tell the body what type of proteins to make. The human genome is a complete set of genetic material organized into 46 chromosomes that are located within the nucleus of the cell. A chromosome is made of DNA and its associated proteins. The double helix structure of DNA or the DNA molecule is made up of two long chains of nucleotides, the proverbial double helix. Each nucleotide is composed of a phosphate group, a five carbon sugar, and a base. If you go back into the gray matter in your cell, you may remember learning a little bit about DNA and protein synthesis. The sequence of nucleotide bases C, G, A, and T will determine the amino acid sequence of proteins and a gene is a segment of DNA that includes all the information needed to make proteins. If we look at this in a little bit more detail, we have the information in the DNA in the nucleus of our cell. Number two is that shows you the chromosome and inside the chromosomes are the DNA. Number three is the, are the genes that make up the chromosomes. Each part of the gene, different pieces of the gene, code for different proteins. This one on the left may code for eye color. The one in the middle may code for hair color. So each one of these pieces codes for a different protein. The proteins then come together based on the program inside the DNA. And they make cells. And those cells come together to make tissue. What we're going to do in class is a protein synthesis activity. I'm not going to go through this slide right now, but what I'm going to tell you is that we're going to have an activity where you will see how DNA gets transcribed onto the messenger RNA, and the messenger RNA moves out into the surrounding cytoplasm of the cell, travels to a ribosome, and how it's on these different ribosomes that amino acids come together to make protein. Thank you.